Today we'll talk a little bit more about atomic models, or different ways that scientists have developed to draw atoms. The model that we've used the most so far is named after the physicist Niels Bohr, because he's the first one to use it. The Bohr model has the nucleus in the center, and the electron shells are drawn in concentric circles outside of the nucleus. The circle closest to the nucleus is the first electron shell, the next circle out from the nucleus is the second shell, the next circle out from that one is the third electron shell, etc. So in the Bohr model, the first circle or first shell has two electrons in it, and then it's full. Recall from last class the way that we figure out how many electrons each shell can hold with the formula 2n squared, where n is the number of the shell you're in. So the first shell, n equals 1, 1 squared is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2, so the first shell holds two electrons. In the Bohr model then, that first electron shell, that first circle, will never have more than two electrons in it because that shell can only hold a maximum of two. For the second shell, n is two, two squared is four, and two times four is eight, so the second shell holds a total of eight electrons, and the second shell will never have more than eight electrons in it because it can only hold eight. Therefore, when drawing the Bohr model for an atom that has more than 10 electrons, the first two go into the first shell, the next eight are drawn in the second shell, and then the remaining electrons go into their shells. Now, again, I'll only expect you to draw the Bohr model for atoms that have electrons that go into the first three shells. Since the third shell can hold three squared is nine times two is 18 electrons, that means that unless I give you specific instructions on how to do it, I'll only expect you to draw Bohr models for atoms with less than two plus eight plus 18 or 28 electrons. Note that I will ask you to draw the Bohr model for various atoms throughout the class, and at this stage, the main thing that you should understand is the electron orbitals and how they fill with electrons. Two electrons go in the first shell, eight in the second, and a maximum of 18 in the third. Now, the Bohr model is good, but conceptually, one of its limitations is related to something that we talked about last class, that being that the shells are not these rigid space spaces, only the width of one electron, like they kind of look like in the Bohr model. No, there's a little thickness to each shell, which means that the electrons can be anywhere within the thickness of the shell within the 360 degrees of its sphere around the nucleus. The Bohr model kind of gives the impression that the electrons are fixed in space around the nucleus, but in reality, they can be anywhere within the thickness of the space of their shell and anywhere within the 360 degree space around the atom that the shell goes. Remember, these are three-dimensional structures. To more clearly represent this uncertainty as to where the electrons are at any given point in time, the electron cloud model is used, where the space the electrons occupy is represented not by distinct circles, but by the shaded area around the nucleus. The purpose of the electron cloud model is different than that of the Bohr model, which is why it looks different. The electron cloud model shows where the electrons may be at any given point in time. Since each orbital is thicker than the width of an electron, and each orbital is not a circle but a sphere around the nucleus, the electrons can be pretty much anywhere within the 360 degree space around the nucleus as long as it's within the boundaries of its shell. Sometimes electrons are drawn within the cloud of the electron cloud model and sometimes they aren't. The two models are shown in figure 3.6.1. I drew the two models using the element aluminum, which is element number 13 in the periodic table. Don't be afraid to look at that table, because next class we're going to learn a lot more about it, and being familiar with its form and structure now will help you uh, in the next class. Bohr models typically show the nucleus as a circle with the element symbol found in the periodic table, written in the center of the circle. If you go to the periodic table and find element 13, you'll see the big AL in the middle of the box. That's aluminum's symbol. The electron shells are represented by the circles around the nucleus, with the first circle being the first shell, the second circle being the second shell, etc. Neither of these models is right or wrong or better or worse. They serve different purposes, and the best model is the one that serves the desired purpose the best. Since most chemists are concerned with electrons, their shells, and the number of electrons in each shell, most chemists use the Bohr model, and so will we.